Hi. This is why everyone should wear a continuous blood glucose monitor for two weeks. This has by far been the best thing I've done for my health to date. If you want optimal health for your brain and body, then you have to monitor your blood glucose levels. And now it's easier than ever to do. In this 10 minute memory hack, I'm gonna show you exactly why you need a continuous blood glucose monitor or a CGM and share what different foods and activities did to my body. Hi, I'm Julia Lindstrom, your neuroscience of brain health educator. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna show you why you need to measure your blood glucose to get your optimal health and why the glucose levels in your body may be making you feel tired, affecting the quality of your sleep that you get, maybe zapping you of all your brain power and giving you that brain fog. And when you stay to the end, I'm gonna share with you where you can get your own blood glucose monitor and how and what to measure for that first two weeks with it. See, your brain is only 2% of your body mass, but it uses more than 20% of your calorie intake and more depending on what activity you're doing, like thinking time or working hard or even reading, you're using more brain capacity, which uses more calories. So when we say you are what you eat, don't you wanna see how that food that's getting into your system is affecting your body and your brain and your sleep and your mood and your health and your energy? This is where your continuous glucose monitor comes in. It's not just for diabetes patients anymore, but we're a brain health company. So let's talk about your insulin and glucose response when it comes to getting dementia and Alzheimer's. We've all heard of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but did you know that there is a type of dementia that a lot of scientists consider type 3 diabetes. When you have too much glucose in your system for too long of a period, you can get what's called insulin resistance. When this happens at an extreme level, it turns into diabetes. But even at small levels, it can lead to dementia when it chronically happens over decades. So what causes high glucose in your body? I don't really know, and neither do you unless you use a continuous blood glucose monitor. This journey started for me when I had insulin experts speak to my memory mastery client and talk about how insulin and glucose affects your brain and your memory. After the session, I went out and I bought a continuous glucose monitor. Now, in the United States, you need a prescription for this. Barring my opinion on the side of how unnecessary this is, there are lots of companies now where you can fill out a form online and they'll just send you a prescription along with the CGM. So. I went ahead and did this. And for the last two weeks, I have been wearing my continuous blood glucose monitor on my arm, measuring every little bit of food I put in my mouth. And honestly, the biggest fear I had about doing this was sticking the needle on my arm, but it absolutely felt like nothing, like someone just tapped me with a finger. So don't worry about that. Now, the company that I used has an amazing app where you're able to input all your data and you can even scan it with barcodes. You want to input as much data as you possibly can. The more data you put in, the better your results are that you get out. So you want to enter all the food quantities that you eat, that your sleep, your exercise, even stressful situations. Here's some very basic guidelines on glucose numbers. First, you don't want your glucose levels to spike more than 20 or 30 points in a given meal. Now, there's some general rules on how to control this, even if you've gone off the lagging a little bit on your sugar intake. But I'll go through those towards the end of the video for you. When you wake up with what's going to be your lowest glucose levels you have for the day, this is called your fasting glucose levels. And then you start to eat and you break your fast. Typically, that will have a higher spike for you than really the rest of the day because you're starting so low from that sleep state. So that one may spike 30 or even 40 points in the morning. But there are some things to get it down under 20 that I'll go over in just a little bit. Typically, you want your blood glucose levels to stay in a really tight range. So it'd go up after you eat and then it stables off and comes back down. You're looking for the food to last you two hours at least. This is called stability. You're also looking for it to go up and come back down to the levels that you were at prior to eating the food. And you want it to be like a nice soft curve up and down throughout the day, right? Up and down and up and down. The best part of, about this for me was really seeing in black and white what different foods did to my 
body. Over the last two weeks, I've been able to determine my optimal breakfast. And it honestly, it surprised me. I started off with just a slice of toast with cheese and some berries. That was terrible. Spiked me over 40 points. Next, I went to oatmeal, steel cut oats with some peanut butter for fat and protein in it and some mixed blueberries in it. That was the best breakfast I had. But then the next day, I replaced the blueberries with some grapes and it was terrible again. Then I went to toast with bacon and eggs and cheese and again had a very good glucose response. The next day, I had the same thing without bacon and it wasn't so good. Everything's better with bacon. Interesting, huh? These are the things you get to test with yourself to see if you can eat bread or no bread because bread typically gives a high glucose response and that's not what you want. But like everything, it's very individualized. So you can get a list of low glycemic foods, but for you, maybe it's different. Really, when you're looking at your glucose levels, you do want to stay under 140 milligrams per deciliter on average. If you're constantly over 140, that's pre-diabetic stages. Now with anything, it's a bell curve. So, you know, it goes like this. If you want optimal levels, then you want to stay within a 20 point range. And typically you're looking from about 90 to 110 or 100 to 120, you will have some spikes that go over that. But if it's just once in a while, once a day, you're okay. So knowing that, take a look at some of my most interesting days. So I didn't try to be 100% healthy the first week. I wanted to get a baseline of what foods did to my body. So I ate pizza. I had a huge hot chocolate with marshmallows and whipped cream in the middle of the afternoon with nothing else with it. I ate tons of different foods. I drank different beverages. I even had a couple glasses of wine one night and another vodka drink another night. I had different meats, different carbs, different snacks, all to test how my body changes with the foods that I put in it. And honestly, for the first four days, I didn't exercise at all because exercise can greatly affect your glucose levels. And I wanted to get a super solid baseline on what foods did to me. You'll see from this first chart that this day I had one of my best days. I stayed between 80 and 105 the whole day, really between 80 and 100 for most of the day. I see that I even had a little dark chocolate in there and an apple for a snack, which is typically a no-no when it's just by itself. I was even traveling on that day and on an airplane and I still had a great day. So now for most of the first couple days, I never spiked more than 20 or 25 points on the outside. So I decided to start mixing it up a little and going a little crazy. You'll see here on this day, I had pizza. I went from 90 to 127, which is a 35 point pop. And worse, my recovery was just terrible. My glucose bounced or jumped all the way up and then it crashed really fast. That glucose did not stay in my system very long. The absolute worst thing I did the whole week was when it came to this day. At four o'clock in the afternoon, I had that huge hot chocolate. You see that I went from pretty low glucose levels because it was mid afternoon, I was getting hungry, dinner was another hour or two away, and I really just needed a snack. My glucose started at 77, which is typically low for me. That's like my fasting glucose levels typically. My glucose shot up to 137 within one hour. That's a 60 point jump. That is by far the highest jump I had the whole two weeks. A really interesting thing was to eat the same optimal breakfast for two mornings in a row, one with really great quality sleep and one with a lot less hours than I normally get. My glucose levels also jumped significantly with the lack of sleep with the same breakfast I had just the day before. It just goes to show you how important sleep is on your glucose. The next really surprising or not so surprising thing was how much stress affected my glucose levels. One fight with my husband over breakfast and my once optimal breakfast now spiked me almost 40 points. Stress does kill. So let's talk about some red flags if you decide to do this for yourself. If your blood sugar spikes after a meal and does not come back down within two hours to your pre-meal levels, that can be a problem that you want to start addressing. Or if your ranges throughout the day are going up and down by 40, 50, 60 points, that's definitely something you want to look at. Now, we all know that sugary drinks and high carbohydrate foods and breads and pizzas and hamburgers are things that are bad for your glucose levels. But do you really follow a solidly good diet without much cheating? Most people don't. Most people cheat more than they should. One of the best benefits of using your own personalized continuous glucose monitor is you get to see for yourself how what you're doing is benefiting or damaging your 
body. I definitely will not be getting another hot chocolate like the one I had this holiday season. Pretty easy to pick tea next time around. It keeps you accountable to yourself because you can see for yourself what havoc is going on in your own body after you eat. And because of that, I've made a lot of personal changes to my own diet. The next really cool thing that came out of this for me was learning the different food orders that you eat can have significant impact on your glucose levels. I can have the same meal of salad, and chicken and rice. One time I eat it with the chicken and rice first, and then the vegetables last. And then the next time I eat it with just the vegetables first, and then the chicken and rice, and I can see a significant difference in the amount of glucose levels. They just just shoot up. You should always start with the vegetables first. This is the same reason that you shouldn't you know, juice your fruits. You should have your fruit as nature intended with all the fiber intact. Because when you juice your fruits in a juice machine, you're basically just drinking sugar water. Whereas when you have the fruit intact, you get all that rich fiber, which helps reduce your glucose response. The next tip to note is no naked carbs, as we like to say. What this means is that you shouldn't have carbohydrates alone. If you want to have a couple pieces of chocolates or goodies or candies or an apple, pair that with some nuts. You want to match your micronutrients. So if you're having a, a plate of pasta alone, it will spike your glucose levels much higher than if you pair that plate of pasta with some, with some fiber, with some protein and some fat. So instead of just having a plate of pasta, have some meatballs in it with some asparagus tips and be sure to use a lot of olive oil to cook it in and then eat the asparagus first. And there's one really good tip to cheat if you've overindulged and that's exercise. By going for a 15 minute walk after every single meal, you will significantly reduce your glucose levels. And if you can't get in a full 15 minutes after every single meal, then do at least 20 squats or 30 jumping jacks or just something to get your heart rate up. Every little bit helps, but a 15 minute walk proves to be extremely effective at lowering your glucose levels or keeping them in a very tight range, especially when you've cheated. And so if you've had a little bit too much, you've cheated a little too much, then you're gonna wanna go out and get that walk or workout afterwards because exercise really helps lower your glucose response. Lastly, you gotta watch when you're eating and how that affects your body. Maybe intermittent fasting isn't for you because the first meal of the day spikes you too high for too long of a period. Or maybe it's great for you. That late night dinner will absolutely absolutely have a very high glucose response than it would have at six o'clock at night. And that high glucose response that late at night can mess up your sleep. The really fun thing is to know every single person has a different insulin response, a different glucose response in their own bodies, a different gut response to foods. So what may spike for me may not do anything for you and vice versa. Now, I wanna say that any company I reference next in this video, I do not endorse and I don't have any sort of special relationship or get paid from them. I do do a lot of testing on my own body to get my perfect optimal health so that I can wake up every single day with a fire in my belly, ready to go, excited for the day. The continuous blood glucose monitor was by far one of the best things I have done for my body and my knowledge of my body. It gave me a direct feedback loop to what I'm doing to my body. I highly recommend this for everyone. There are three or four main companies right now that you can go online and get your own prescription so that you don't have to go through your doctor, but it can be much more expensive. Companies like Levels, NutriSense, Very, January.ai, they all let you order online, but I will say that the feedback they give you on their apps are much better than what you get from your doctor. Otherwise, if you have an open-minded doctor, they can prescribe you a C CGM at a much lower price point. You only need it for two weeks to one month to really get the feedback you need to optimize your diet to make your body the happiest and healthiest it can be. Thanks for watching and go ahead and click that subscribe button. Help us get to 5,000 subscribers now and you'll get our weekly 10-minute memory hacks. Thank you.